welcome to the Adam and Andy podcast again. Uh, I think I probably will use that first part on the yeah. podcast. We might as well because we've got it. So if you're watching the vidcast, I'm I'm a big dum dum, and I had forgotten to start recording. Um, I it's I feel like that scene in While We're Young, where Jamie asks Josh to recreate the moment where he finds out of <laughs> where he hands him the phone and he's like, "Do it again." Uh, that's what I feel like. Pretend to act badly. I know. I think Ben Stiller did a pretty good job, though. He's a good comedian, so I think he he did pretty good there. Oh, yeah. Where he's like, like all- oh, my God, it's the same guy. Yeah. Anyway, Sarah, do you want me to go back to the beginning and pretend like we did this all the first time? Uh, <laughs> Just uh, kidding. I'm sincerely kidding. So if you're watching us on the vidcast, I'm super sorry that you missed our banter at the beginning of this episode, but we didn't get too far. We haven't done Adam or Andy news. I'm just a big dumb dumb and completely forgot to re- start recording the video portion of this. But now we're here and I want to get back to this shirt. The future full. My the shirt future is full of rats. The future is full of rats. Uh, so this shirt was made by a. Lo- a local Atlanta musician slash comedian that we know, uh, Gabby Watts. Uh, who, her band is Gabby Rots with an R. She's really, she's a really great musician. I love her music. Hilarious. She's so funny. Uh, she's she's a stand up comedian. Instagram. Instagram. Yes, please. Yeah, think. go ahead. Pull up her. She's on Instagram, TikTok. I actually I pulled up her Twitter as well. It's on Twitter. She's at. <laughs> I'm going to spell this. G H H H H B B I E W A T T S. So Gabby Watts with W A T T S on on Twitter. Anyway, she's really funny. She makes very fun. She's a great musician, but also makes really funny videos. And she made this shirt uh, that she was selling on her Etsy store. And she didn't make it specifically for rats, as in Adam Driver fans. But I was like, oh my god, I have to wear the shirt on my podcast. So if you would like to contact Gabby and get one of these shirts. Uh, I'm it's super soft and I'm super happy with it. And now the whole world knows that the future is full of rats. And that's what so I that's the future I want to see. The same huh? way on Instagram. What is G-A, it? The same on Instagram. G A H H H B B I E W A T T S. Follow, follow her. The fuck out of her. She follow her. Buy one of these shirts. Hilarious. Support her because she's a really amazing musician and comedian, and we love her. Okay. God, that was embarrassing. Um, anyway, the future is full of rats. Now, let me get back to Stan history, right? We were going to have a Stan history yeah. lesson. Why do they call themselves rats? Okay. So Adam Driver stands call themselves rats. Listeners, correct me if I'm wrong at Adam Andy pod, because I've really only, even though I've loved Adam Driver, the actor for a really long time, I would say I've really only been in the rat community for probably the last year or so. So if mm-hmm. I miss something, please let me know. Uh, actually, it's been about exactly a year since I've been, I would consider my, I have embraced my rat dumb, even though I've always loved him since girls. Um, so Adam Driver was in an episode, I want to say it was Law and Order, one of those kind of episodes where he played this like stalkery kind of character. You know how every actor is like, they've all been in Law and Order and like Criminal Minds and all that shit playing some kind of weirdo. Anyway, he's in an episode where he plays this like stalkery character, but he also works at a lab. And so there's this part where the, they come to get him because they find out that he's done something wrong. Or was that when he was, okay, he might've been in two different episodes. There's like an episode where he plays a stalker. And then there's another episode where he plays a rich boy who like covers up a murder or some shit. He's in two episodes as two different characters. Well, I think there's like there's Law and Order, there's SVU, there's Law and Order, you know, uh, you know, Hoboken, you know, there's all kinds of different Law and Orders, right? So, uh, rats, tweet at me at Adam Antipod if I'm getting this mixed up, but I've seen the clip. Okay, so this is what we're getting to the point here, which is there is a scene in one of these criminal shows where the cops are coming to arrest him, and he's wearing this lat like scrubs he's in this lab and he's holding a rat and he's going yelling at one of the uh he's yelling at one of the lab techs the the rats you have to feed them on schedule or they get sick and so this gif and this clip is like constantly being retweeted over twitter and it's like basically the joke is whenever new adam content appears in the world the rats are getting fed on schedule 
So that's a little piece of Stan history. That's in the pantheon of rotisserie chicken. Yes. And and so now you know that, I don't know if you identify as a rat, but you are welcome to be one of the rats. Sarah's going to think about it. I will think about it. Sarah's going to think about it. Embrace it. Embrace your destiny, Sarah. (laughs) Okay. Um, I feel like this is a good segue into some Adam and Andy news. We actually have lots of Adam and Andy news to cover today because some big stuff happened this week, right? Some big stuff. Please tell me. Tell you. I've been tweeting. I've been texting you about it all week. Well, you send me pictures of that's true. Adam. That's true. Well, let's start. uh, Do you? So, do you want to start with Andy? Well, let's start with Andy. Let's start with Andy because we were just talking about Adam. So let's talk. Let's start with Andy. First of all. I just want to say that our listeners are the greatest, like I, literally the greatest, like the people that listen to the show. I I don't know. I mean, you and I have been doing this for like five years, right? Podcasting, not this show, but just oh, po- generally okay. podcasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I love doing the Feminine Mistake podcast, but I don't think I've ever had as much fun doing a podcast. We did the Feminine Mistake. We did a Georgia May podcast for a year. I've never had as much fun doing a podcast as I have doing this one. Because people are so cool and fun and interact with us and yeah. tweeted us about stuff. And it's just like, it's such a fucking blast. So I just want to say, like, the people that listen to the show and interact with us, like, on social media are the fucking best. I just want to say that. Um, so you may recall, Sarah, uh, after, after we watched Pops, during Pop Star, there were two things that we really wanted after, well, during the show, right? The first was, we wanted to know whose dick, whose dick was in the window. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, not 20 minutes after I put that episode up and it went out, we got a tweet from uh, uh, somebody. They just go by Palm Springs on Twitter. So thank you, Palm Springs, for sending us this two things. They sent us that it was Judd. First of all, it was Judd Apatow's dick. So the mystery solved. That was Judd Apatow's dick. And in fact, there are multiple articles where Judd Apatow talks about his dick being in the movie. And also, I also sent you a video of the Lonely Island talking about it for like three minutes. The the video you sent me, the way they were talking about it, it felt like a bit and I felt like they it wasn't true and that they were just making a joke. Sure. Yeah. In the in the interview, it was a bit, but I actually read an interview with Judd Apatow where he said that was my dick. And he was like, I've just made basically his Judd Apatow said, I have made so many other actors get naked on my films that it only felt fair that I would reciprocate by putting my dick in a window. <laughs> oh so that was, that, dick, really that was Judd acted. Apatow's dick. He that really dick acted. That dick acted. took risks. It yeah. could have gotten pinched. He let it just slap the window, slap him in the in the. <laughs> he really let it all hang out, if you know what I mean. So thank you, Palm Springs, on Twitter for that. Uh, also, Palm. The other thing we asked for was that we said we wanted to see pictures of Andy and Akiva and Yorma in high school. Yeah, and those Palm are so Springs cute. also tweeted us. So I today's visual aid. Uh, those are so cute. Today's oh visual gosh. aid is uh these pictures partially these pictures um they look so dorky yeah so there we are andy yorma and akiva they look like the hugest dorks and i am i there's look at those little cuties how tiny they are i know they're so skinny oh my god like like oh somebody is who is somebody is not feeding these kids anyway so there's one picture (laughs) and there's a second one uh, oh and so gosh. thank you. He is cute. Yeah, he Look definitely. Um, he definitely has some star power. These are babies, though. So let's not baby. Let's. <laughs> let's no, uh, I, I know they're I adults just, now, but like, yeah, yeah. I, but they're babies. These are children because they're in high school, right? I know, but he's so cute. I'm just what I'm saying is that if I had been his age, I would right. Have a crush yes, in on high him. school, absolutely. Yeah, I think in high school for sure. Uh, just make to make that completely clear, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you to uh, Palm Springs on Twitter for sending us these pictures and for clarifying that that was, in fact, Judd Ap- Apatow's dick. So thank you for that. Um, other news about Andy. Andy is shooting Brooklyn Nine-Nine right now. 
Uh, so that's going on. Uh, and I also, um, well, let me come out of here real quick. Stop, stop sharing. Uh, so I did have, uh, some information, uh, and this comes from best of Andy, best of Andy on Twitter. Uh, there is an interview out there with Shamir Anderson, who is one of the guys who's behind a new movie that Andy is going to, is being developed for Andy and Craig Robinson. Remember Craig Robinson from, Mm -hmm. uh, office, office? uh, the office and of course from Brooklyn nine, nine. Uh, So some notes from that interview, they are working on the script. Andy is helping again, just like he did with Palm Springs. Uh, In this film, the characters will get superpowers from smoking marijuana, uh, the effect of which can last for a long time or just for 20 minutes. Uh, And the superpowers can be stuff like flying, but can also be really weird. And they change depending on when you smoke. And so that means each time they have a different superpower. But this is just a script that's in development. So who knows what's going to, how it's going to change as time goes on. But that's the, that's kind of the thing. That's what they're working with right now. I mean, the confidence to share a script that's in development, like what the script is. Well, they're just talking about it, you know? I mean, shit. but I wouldn't share. You wouldn't? Why not? I would share that with like a friend, but not with like the world or anyone can see. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Unless you're Noah Bombeck and then you just go, it's about a middle-aged guy. Having a crisis. <laughs> name is me with a blonde wife. Um, yes. all of the wives are blonde. Do they all are they? They literally all blonde, right? Anyway, we'll get mm-hmm. into it. Um, so that's what I've got. So I also um, let me go back to screen share for super second. Adam. And I got a picture here of Andy and Craig Robinson oh, that I just wanted to cute. share. That that uh, uh, best of Andy posted alongside this 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 bit of facts. Okay, uh, let's move on to Adam. Um, so the first thing I wanted to draw your attention to was, uh, I sent you some pictures, uh, last week. Didn't I of Adam wearing this outfit? Some of them. Yes. Yes. I haven't seen this one. I don't think. Okay. RIP me cause of death. These pants. So listeners, if you're not watching our vidcast, this Sarah, this outfit is it for me. Okay. Like I will never recover from this outfit. I just want to say, so Adam's wearing this, like, I would call it like a, it almost looks like olivey kind of like dark olive shirt to me. Right. It looks black. It looks, it looks black dark to olive to me. And he's got these fucking cufflinks on and the Gucci belt. And then these brown slacks. Let me give you a full view of the slacks, Sarah. I like his, uh, you don't like the slacks. No. These brown slacks, I would die for these slacks. Like, I would literally lay my life down for these fucking slacks. I'm not even joking. I don't deserve this podcast. What? I don't deserve this podcast. Sarah, I think it's, I think your contribution to this podcast is important. But here's something you might like a little bit. Maybe, uh, look, I I just want to take one more second to appreciate these slacks. And then I'm going to move on to this picture, which is Adam on a bike, which I thought you might enjoy. Okay. Uh, so there, he was also seen riding around on a bike again with no, he, with no fucking hands on the handlebars, just like he does in this movie we're about to talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, those are some pics from the set of Gucci. You're, I, I get, you don't love the pants as much as me. I'm just saying like the, these pants, um, I, I feel like I, when I close my eyes at night, Sarah, what I see is these pants. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Now, there is one more really important thing that we have to cover in Adam and Andy news that happened this Wait, week. There were more, more pictures. I, I know, more pictures. because we have to talk about the Annette trailer. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. I haven't watched in a couple days. If I put a link to it in the chat right now, can we watch it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put a link to it so we can both be looking at the same trailer at the same time. Okay. Okay. And we'll watch it together, which is what I wanted to do earlier this week. But I didn't want to like, you know, I didn't want to. Sarah's on vacation and I, 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 I feel bad taking your time up enough to record this podcast. I didn't want to make you have to stop everything okay, and I've watch clicked. this trailer I've with clicked. me. Huh? I've clicked. I've clicked. Wait, you clicked on the link that I sent. Yes, I did. Okay. And it's at the, you're pause? at the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's thinking. It's thinking. It's thinking. Okay. It's thinking. It's playing. It's playing. Okay, stop it and make sure it's at the beginning because we're going to play it at the same time. Okay. Okay. Oh, two. Really? Mine's all the way at the beginning. 
Okay, mine. I, <laughs> okay, all the way at the beginning. Yes. Okay, are you ready? Ready. And play. First time I fell in love. His voice is so deep. Woke up next to the girl. And escaped. Okay, the motorcycle. I like far. it. The man has changed me. I love this I shot her, of him in the green kissing eyes. her. And the blue. There's a knife. Ah! And she stabbed someone. Hmm. That's a little more puzzling. What's with the wolves? Oh, What's with the wolf? I'm ex- I, I want to hear him sing. They haven't given us any of him singing yet, and I can't wait. But I like this music so far. I feel like this yeah. fucking soundtrack is amazing. I Did love he the just twirl with the microphone? Yeah. I don't like the scissors. I didn't like that at all. I did not like no. that at all. The puppet is so creepy. That baby is terrifying. Excuse me a minute. Ooh. Is he stalking her? I don't know. I love him running with the weird baby. This movie is so fucking French. I can't even. <laughs> well, I don't like that the baby. baby. I don't like I the baby. Yeah, no. I don't like it. What does it mean? Is it about a child? Everything will be all right. Is it a thriller? I don't get it. The baby is named Annette. No, I know, but but why is the movie about a baby? Well, okay, so we've watched it, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know. I might just post us like reacting to the trailer separately. We'll see. Um, oh, Sarah, your thoughts. I was talking throughout. So what? What do? You, what are your immediate thoughts? I don't know what it's about. Are my Im- Im- immediate thoughts? That's fair. Um, it seems to be a thriller, and it seems to be romantic. It seems to be creepy. It seems yeah. to be mu- musical. It is a musical. Like um, Adam will a, be singing. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. He, he sang in um in Marriage Story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but that was just um, him singing like a normal person would sing. That wasn't like a musical voice. So I think we can okay. assume that it will be a little bit different in this movie. Okay. Good. Like remember that was just a guy singing at a bar. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I want to know more. I don't. I don't really know what to think because it's well it's you when very... you texted me you said it, he seemed very compelling yes he he does seem compelling um yeah i honestly don't know what the fuck to make of this movie i'm excited it look uh, sh- uh, sarah i would say the genre of this film to me is french french this french, movie is french like genre this is like this movie is is like so, is just like so fucking french it's, it's like, like Une experience de it, cinéma. Yes, yes, exactly. So, uh, is he a stalker? Is he going to murder her? I'm not really sure. I feel like what I like a lot of people on the internet seem to think that maybe he's like going to turn out to be some kind of sociopathic murderer. I do know that trailers are designed to lead mislead you, so I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm going to embrace but that why, fully we don't know the whole story yet. why are they designed to mislead you that's so wrong that shouldn't be what it what they are well i would say that good trailers mislead you in the best way like good trailers tell you what the movie's about without giving it all away which mm-hmm. requires a bit of editing to mislead you otherwise you wouldn't be surprised that's true. um so if he if like if he he obviously gets arrested for something in this movie, yeah. So if he's arrested well, it looks for like something, he stabs someone. There's a shot where he's like, uh, some people. Like I've, some people on Twitter think that's him drowning someone, like holding uh, their head underwater. Well, I I heard a a knife, really, in at that shot. It was like, what if there was just some hair clogged in the pool and he's just unclogging the drain though? Like, what if he's just being very helpful and there's some leaves? in front of that vent thing that like does the filtration and he's just pulling the leaves out of the vent. Mm-hmm. And it was a very like, <laughs> it was a very like, yes, 
that kind of motion. He's, yeah, I'm not. He doesn't. He seems like a kind of a strange dude. He mm-hmm. seems maybe a little stalkery. He that hand reaching hairs. out, the hand reaching out. Yeah. But how do you feel about the hair? He had a lot of different styles, a lot of different lengths. Yeah, actually, on Twitter, everybody was saying, I feel like I I feel like we've entered like I feel like this movie is the Adam Driver multiverse and that we're getting all of Adam's characters in one movie. That's what it almost seems like. Okay, yeah, I'm not you can't quote. Don't quote me on that. That's just like an opinion. I'm going to tweet it right now. Yeah, well, I'm not the first person. (laughs) I'm not the first person to um, to come up with that. Uh, Let me uh, get back to our visual aids for a second here. Please. I need to see more. Um. Hang on, let me make sure I can get to. Here we go. So, uh, let's start with this here, Sarah. Mm-hmm, the long hair. Yeah. What do you think about this? It's it's like just slightly too long. It feels you very don't like old it. Fashioned. Mm. It's slightly too. He long. reminds me of like he should be in on like a romance novel. Yeah. He looks like a romance, like a Fabio. romance. No, not Fabio. Fabio is. Like he's actually hot. The, this is, but he's got like romance novel hair. Yeah, nothing against Fabio. He's just not my type. Like there's something very, I don't know, too much mm. about him. Um, so I like the lighting a lot. There's a lot of dramatic lighting, a lot of colors. I don't think this movie will be boring. No, it's coming out in July. We could mm. go see it at the theater. Do you know what day in July? Uh, I don't. It's coming out like mid July. I think it's also coming out on Amazon at the same time. Oh no 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 no! Sorry, it's going. It's co- premiering in cans in July. It probably won't be here. I feel like it probably won't be here until the fall. Okay. Or later. I mean, it's premiering in cans. I don't think it's gonna be here until the end of the year, probably. Um. Okay. Then we've also got this exhibit B. Sarah, you're okay. making a what's okay. go you're making a face. You're making a face. This oh, is like, when he's yeah. yelling out, What's your problem to somebody in the audience? I mean, yep. a man in a bathrobe on stage is always means that there's some healthy there's some healthy mental stuff happening, I feel like. If you're wearing a bathrobe on stage, it can only mean that you're in a good place. Yeah. I like I like it. I like it I like it too. I don't know how you couldn't. I don't know. I don't know how you couldn't. <laughs> uh, then we've got this look, which, yeah. to be honest, looks a bit like my my Uncle Peter circa 1977. I think it's the mustache and perhaps the, mu- the glasses. Oh, the mustache. Oh, and the hair is like a like a like a football hell. hell. No, I but- think his hair. He's got so many different looks in this movie. Yeah. Um, so obviously he gets into some kind of legal jam here. Don't know what it's about. Uh, and then we've got, I think my favorite image so far is this one. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm into yeah. it. Yeah. So are you hyped for Annette? Are you hyped? Are I'm you excited? I'm as hyped as, as anyone could be. Um, I'm, uh, I'm interested I'm hyped. I mean, I'm cur- I like weird movies. I am just look, I if you're in, if you're a, if you're fr- if you're one of our French listeners, I don't know if we have any French listeners, but we do. I hope we do. I hope we do. I actually do love French films, so don't um, you know, don't think I'm uh saying that I don't. I am suspicious of French films with babies in them because I have seen several where I've seen a French comedy where a baby is cooked. Ooh. accidentally in the oven and it's so it's no. it scarred me and so i'm just not sure what to expect with this baby i'm a little concerned uh but the baby yeah, looks very be. fake so yeah uh it like this movie it seems like a fever dream yeah but i'm hyped for it i'm excited i'm excited for any new adam movie honestly yeah but this looks weird as hell so and you know i like weird shit yeah me too. Uh, so I love Mar- Mar- Marianne Cotillard. As yeah, well. she's great. I know we didn't talk about her at all, uh, but she's great. Um, so I'm. I don't know anything about the director's work. I know he's important, uh, but uh, I haven't seen any of his other work. Uh, the music sounds really cool too. I actually really like the music so far. Um, maybe wonderful. We'll get a trailer where we get to hear Adam sing. I don't know. Yeah. 
It's opening can, by the way. Like it is opening. It's the first film that opens. Nice. The festival. So, hey, do you want to talk about While We're Young, this yes. week's film? Yes. Uh, directed by Noah Bombeck, written by Noah Bombeck, starring Noah Bombeck's Noah Bombeck. fears uh, and insecurities. Uh, 2014. I have my first question to you, Sarah, is, is this, is this movie Noah Bombeck's midlife crisis, like happening in real time? <laughs> it is. You think? It is. Yes. He experienced this exactly. You think so? I think this is like, either he experienced this or he knows someone who did, or this is his fear. Maybe. Uh, I don't, I mean, I didn't, I actually didn't do any research on it. I mean, he's not, a, no, Bombeck is not a documentarian, but I guess you could, I mean, he's not a documentarian, so I don't. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean the documentarian part. I meant the uh, couple who comes into your life and kind of like messes things up. And messes things. You know, here's the funny thing, Sarah. I was, uh, just before this podcast, I was talking to my husband, Chris, who's never listened to the show and probably won't ever listen to any podcast that we ever do in our lives. Um, but I was talking to him about this movie and he's like, yeah, I've, we, I've seen that. We watched it together. And I was like, no, we've never seen this movie before. And he's like, yes, we have. He is old. He wears a fedora. He, he starts hanging out with these young people. And then he realizes he's too old to be hanging out with these young people. And I was like, that's wait a minute. And then we looked it up. That movie is Greenberg. That is a different Noah Baumbach movie called Greenberg that we've also seen same fucking plot, only instead of uh, Adam Driver and Amanda Seyfried, it's uh, Ben Stiller and uh, Greta Gerwig. And he starts a relationship up with Greta Gerwig and then realizes he's too old for her uh, because he's an adult and she's like 23 or whatever. <laughs> I was like, oh, he has made this movie before. <laughs> So if you want to watch this again, but with different characters, just you can go watch Greenberg. It's basically the same movie. Oh, barf. But why would you? Because Adam Driver's not in it. Although Greta Gerwig was very good. I liked Greta Gerwig in the movie. I remember thinking when I watched Greenberg, I was like, after we watched it, I know this isn't a podcast about the movie Greenberg. This isn't the Greenberg and Greenberg podcast. But I remember after we watched it, I was like, did you like that, babe? And he was like, not particularly. And I was like, you know, I didn't particularly like it either. Um, I liked Greta Gerwig. Um, anyway. And she's his wife, right? He, she is now, but not when he made Greenberg. Uh, double barf. Okay, Sarah, did you like this movie? Give me an N. <laughs> Give me an O. <laughs> um... I I can't say that I didn't I I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Um but I didn't like it. Mm. First of okay, let me I just need to get this right out, out out there. I need to get this out here first uh, right off the bat. I'm supposed to hate Jamie, right? Jamie is Adam Driver. Adam Driver. I'm supposed yes, to hate Jamie? Yes. I don't hate Jamie. I fucking don't. I'm just going to say it. I don't hate Jamie. You know why I don't hate Jamie? Because Josh is a piece of shit. Josh is, is a ba Josh is a grown ass man acting like a baby who everything that happens in this movie is something that Josh brought on himself. So I don't feel bad for Josh. Like Josh. Here's why I don't hate Jamie. Is Jamie a lying little brat? Yes. But Josh never went into that relationship thinking that Jamie was his equal. He wanted somebody to parent. Mm -hmm. So he should just go get himself a baby. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Newsflash. Babies have to look up to you. They don't have a choice. He wanted somebody to look up to him and to, to admire him and to validate him. That's what Josh mm -hmm. wanted. And Jamie mm -hmm. gave him that to get what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what? That's what happens when you hang out with 25-year-old hipsters. 
Hey, you met me when I was tw- 25. Yeah, well, um, were, are you a hipster? I don't think so. Also, I was, I was much younger then as well. That's true. And um, I'm just saying. And also, yeah. Yeah. Look, not nothing against. I don't want to make this to be about like. I don't like people in their 20s. I do, but I'm a 40. I'm 41 year old woman. 25 year olds don't want to hang out with me, and why would they? I'm boring. I, I my boring. knees pop when I when I bend down to get something. <laughs> if I were 25 right now, I would hang out with you. Why though, Sarah? You shouldn't. Because I'm you're boring. Awesome. You're not boring. Not to me. Um, I don't hate Jamie. I don't. I I, I, I do hate Josh. All of them. I dislike, you dislike everyone. all of them. I don't yes. hate Cordelia. Cordelia deserved better. I think. Who is she again? The wife. The wa- oh yeah, I Naomi her Watts. Name. Na- Naomi Watts. I was just thinking of her as Na- 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 Naomi. I didn't learn her name. I don't hate Cordelia. In fact, I don't know why Cordelia puts up with Josh's bullshit. Yeah. He doesn't respect her. He Mm-mm. like he he's making this movie. He won't let her help. They're both filmmakers. She has ideas. He doesn't support them. Yeah. And he's really a dick to her dad who just wants to help her. And I'm sorry, but I didn't see anything Super in this movie dick. that ind- indicated that her dad was like deserved the treatment he was getting from him at all. Yeah. Yeah. Josh just seems like a fucking dick to me. Yeah. Um. And look, Ben Stiller was great. I loved Ben Stiller. He was great. I don't know if this movie is self-aware enough to realize that Josh is like the villain of this movie. It's not. I don't think it is. Yeah, also, no. Sarah, how do you feel about movies about people making movies? How do you genuinely feel about you it? You know how we both feel about that. I, I, hate, just, I it. hate it. I hate it. It's Gag so me. Me, me. Meta, yeah. I I want to vomit into a ayahuasca bucket when I think about movies that are about people who make movies. Who cares? Yeah. Who I know. cares? Is it a documentary about Stanley Kubrick or Brian De Palma? No? Okay, I don't fucking care. Because yeah. no one cares about people who make movies. We make movies because we're, we want to make a movie about life. Yeah. We don't need to make movies about life about movies. Yeah. Except yeah. the one exception, Sarah, is a documentary called American Movie, which is a brilliant fucking movie. And it's actually more about dreams and dream and holding on to a dream than it is about making movies. Making movies is just kind of a subplot. Also, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is funny and also kind of about making a movie, but not. Every other every other movie about making movies can get fucked. Agreed. Yeah, uh, that that was very. There were lots of cringy things for me in this movie. This made this movie made me openly hostile. Yes, hostile. And actually, yeah. Do you so, want to talk about some of the things you found to be cringy? I don't even feel like we have to go in order. We can just flop, flip flop around, like a um, dick in a window. I, <laughs> I didn't make. I had notes of the things that I found cr- cringy, I guess. Uh, How about so, that fucking pitch meeting? Remind me of that again. Where the, he went to meet with the investor. Oh, yeah. And, and they the were talking about like, incarcerated African-Americans. Yeah. And he's making a movie about it. And I'm like, first of all, Josh, excuse me, Josh, who are you to make a movie about this when you don't even fucking understand? Like, like is it just is that a hook because or is your movie about war like what is it about and what makes why are you the authority on incarcerated black men in america yeah and he didn't even say something about that like this is not like my story but i'm gonna tell it like so does but does the movie realize how stupid he sounds i don't know if it does like i I think josh is making i think josh is getting like a, the set, like he is like intentionally being satir, like he's the. I think they're satirizing him. Mm-hmm. I, I think Noah Baumick is satirizing Josh, but I just mm-hmm. don't know to what extent. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know who's supposed to be being made fun of in that scene, Josh or the asshole hedge fund manager, or both of them. I don't know. Josh is terrible at pitching, like legit. He, he should have let Jamie really come terrible. in there. Jamie will talk. Jamie will talk a, a person who is only wearing pants in below 30 degree weather. He will talk their pants off of them. Like yes. the, they will be like, I will stand here naked 
in n- n- negative 30 temperatures with the wind just blowing through my ass crack, you can have my pants, Jamie. He should have had, if he had seen Jamie as a collaborator instead of the baby that he was raising in the film world, then Jamie would have been in that pitch meeting and Jamie would have gotten them that money. Anyway, mm-hmm. sorry, you continue. I'm just enraged. I yeah, fucking I thought- hate Josh. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that Josh did a terrible pitch. And I thought that the guy he was pitching to was a moron. Yeah, and he was. Like, I think that the scene was making fun of his generation. Like, maybe or something like that. That generation is really uh, like absorbed in their phones and really into like instant gratification. And uh, yeah, this movie was a lot about a lot that a lot. Yeah. That's the main thing I don't like about this movie is it's very preachy. It's very like, this yes. is the message. Message. Here it and is. In, in case you don't know, Charles Groban is going to deliver a fucking speech about it at the end of the movie. Who? Charles Groban, the actor who plays um, Cordelia's father. His name is Leslie oh. or something, I think. The dad. Yeah. The dad who gives the speech at the end about truth and cinema. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah's like, I yeah. blocked that out. It was like a lecture that I slept through. It was a lecture I slept through, yes. I just like, uh, the, yeah, that's, I mean, we're, that's skipping all the way to the end. I know, but, I'm um, sorry. I just don't have any respect for the timeline in this movie. Um, like Jamie, you know, I'm going to manipulate the timeline a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing is like, that scene at the end with the, where Josh tries to tell on him and then it t- ends up being he like, He seems like a fucking psycho. As good at, like, and- and Jay- Jamie's just like, yeah, I just you know did this, and 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 uh, Cord- 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 Cordelia's eyes like, I don't see like the big problem with that, and it kind of like mind your own business, Josh. Worry about your own yeah. shit. Fix your yeah. marriage, Josh. Maybe you should focus mm-hmm. on that, which he does do at the end. He realizes that it's he needs to focus on his wife. He does realize that at the end. Yeah, I feel like this movie is a stopping point, but on the way between Greenberg and marriage story. Like, I feel like this guy later becomes Charlie Barber. Oh my God. Don't you think? Yes. Like they have a baby and then he's like, and then she leaves him in about five years. Right. Yes. Um, okay. I okay the one there was a scene I did like and that was all the uh, that was all this the scene of all the hipsters doing analog things like playing board games and listening to records and using a typewriter and I think it was meant to look st- like they were stupid but I was like mm-hmm. or was it meant to compare how the younger generation was wanting older things and the new the older mm-hmm. generation wanted stuff on their iPads I don't really know what the fuck that was about I just was like I thought, I thought it was kind of cool. I, was I guess a lot of making fun of hipsters. Well, yeah, we had a lot of making fun of hipsters. Well, hipsters should be made fun of, but I think it was making fun of hipsters. But it was also making fun of like people in the middle in their middle age. Like that's the mm-hmm. thing is that I don't. It was hard to grasp onto stuff because I didn't really feel like I had anyone to root for. And so if I'm not if I'm going to root for anybody, I decided it was Jamie because at least Jamie was playing everybody so good. I. <laughs> Uh-huh. Jamie succeeded in playing everyone like a fi- fucking fiddle and applause to you th- Jamie I don't think this movie was making fun of the old, old, older generation just because I know that Noah Baumbach is a part of that generation and I just didn't feel that he would be making fun of himself and it just felt very like it felt like he was making fun of Jamie's generation and kind of being like yeah, like that guy, that guy's such a fucking hipster. Like I'm, I just felt like it was from Josh's perspective. I agree. I'm going to give Noah Bombeck a little bit more credit than that because I do think he made Josh seem like a raving lunatic. And I do think that, I do think he was making fun of the old, like I think he was making fun of, what he was making fun of was a person in their middle age trying to not, not being able to accept that they're middle aged. That's what I think. Um. Because, but I don't think it's bad to have someone come in and shake up your life. Like, I'm going to circle back to my joke earlier about how I shouldn't hang out with 25 year olds and they shouldn't hang out with me. But I do follow a lot of people on Twitter who are, who are fic writers and they are 
all very, a lot of them are younger than me. And they would never want to hang out with me in real life because I'm super boring. But their, their, uh, their like view of the world through their art, like the fix that they're writing, like has transformed me because it's changed my writing. And it's like, I, now it's brought me like all this enjoyment and it's made me sort of see my work differently because they're out here like writing all this stuff. No one's paying them for it. It doesn't matter. Um, who's like it they're doing it for the pure love of writing and for the other people who are reading it to love it and like there's something really pure about that like to make something and not worry about the success which I, i'm going to circle back to the movie that's also a theme in this movie i think and so like those folks unknowingly have come in and changed my life but i'm not going to go around and ask them to validate me that's not going to happen whereas josh is like these people have come into his life and and for a while it really does inject this juice into his you know marriage with Cordelia like they're excited and they're excited about doing different kinds of work and like they're going out and like you know walking in on train tracks and dumb shit like that but and having hip hop classes and having fun right they're having fun mm-hmm. they forgot how to have fun in life mm-hmm. and there's that's actually a good thing it's good when someone comes yeah. in your life and shows you how to have fun again but like don't expect don't expect them to like fix all your problems and look up to you just because you're older. Like just because you're older doesn't mean they have to put you on a pedestal. And that's what Jamie wants. He wants, I'm not Jamie. That's what Josh wants. He wants Jamie to put him on a fucking pedestal. He needs that validation. And that's what I fucking hate about Josh and why Jamie, I don't give a shit what Jamie did to Josh because Josh is a piece of garbage. (laughs) I don't think that it's, bad to want val- val- validation though but like, like I think it's okay like we all we all do want val- val- validation sure we do but you can but that but there but not like you can't walk into a friendship if you want to really have a friendship with somebody like you can't expect them to look like you can't expect them to look up to you that's not equal. Mm-hmm. Like you and I give each other validation in the sense that I can't stop staring at that beautiful top that you're wearing. And I'm not giving you validation because you expect it. I am I want you to feel validated and beautiful because I love you. Aww. And uh, yeah, that's the no. truth. Yeah. And we valid you and I validate each other's work all the time to, to lift each other up because we know that this business is hard. Yeah. But you're right. I didn't. I didn't seek a friendship out with you for validation. It was for friendship and exactly sharing of interests and, um, and and that kind of stuff. You want to feel smart, be a film professor. People have to stand there and listen to you. Yeah. Which he did for, I guess he was doing some kind of lecture, but get a fucking film professor job and, and everyone has to listen to you pontificate about film. Yeah. Um, have a baby. I mean, I'll get into the have a baby thing in a minute because I got a lot to say about that. Have a baby. And then you can, the, if you want to parent somebody, have a child. They're forced to look up to you. They don't have any other choice. <laughs> if you want, as, and, and, and I, that's what I think is wrong about, like, that's where I, where I think Josh doesn't really have a right to be upset because he... Like he said, he yells at Jamie at the end there when he's like, you, he's like, uh, you know, he would when Jamie is like, I asked you to co-direct this with me. Like Jamie had this idea, which by the way, Josh said was a stupid idea to his face, mm-hmm. which is not constructive feedback. No. He said it was a stupid idea. He said it was a stupid idea to his wife. And Jamie's like, I asked you to co-direct this with me. And Josh is like, yeah, because you knew I'd say no. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you that you never saw Jamie as a, a person whose art ma- mattered. You just saw him as like mm-hmm. some stupid kid. And you yeah. thought you were, he was, you were, he was puffing you up in some way. And he did puff you up. And that's how he, he, Jamie, single white female Josh. That's what he did. He single white female him. I don't. I don't know know what 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 that is. That's I've, a I've reference. Heard. That's a reference for old people no. only. Okay. Uh no, single white female is a film with Jennifer Jason Lee. Ironically, no Obama ex ex wife. 
Jennifer Jason Lee and Bridget Fonda. And Jennifer Jason Lee answers an ad in uh, where Bridget Fonda needs a roommate. And and Jennifer mm-hmm. Jason Lee is kind of awkward and weird and she becomes a roommate, but then slowly she like cuts her hair the same as Br- Bridget Fonda and then like starts to take over things in her life and like eventually takes away her boyfriend and like Is this like all about Eve? Yes, 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 it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All about Eve is the original single white female. Yes. So, uh, Jamie, all about Eve's. Jamie, all about Eve's. Josh, that's exactly what he does. It's he exactly does, yeah. what he does. That's what I thought. Like when when I watched this, I was like, this reminds me of All About Eve, um, but not as good. Not as good. No. <laughs> um, not as classic. No. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I. You're right. I did like Cordelia. Yes. M- the most probably, yeah. and and Darby was fine. I like Darby. Uh, Darby seemed to be an enabler. I really loved Darby's monologue about how she's the hitchhiker. You know what? I'm not going to say who this reminds me of, but there's somebody in our lives that this reminded me of. Um, from our past. Uh, she said, "I'm." When when you pitch up pick up a hitchhiker, no one will pick up a guy, but they'll pick up a girl. And so I'm there to be the girl that the hitchhiker will pick that they'll pick us up. Mm. And yeah. that reminded me of another couple that we knew in our lives who mm-hmm. yep. did the she, exact the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um anyway, that was a good speech. Look, this movie yeah. has good dialogue in it. I'm not saying it's it doesn't. It's good dialogue. It's believable. It has good it's, scenes. The acting is great. I just don't, yeah. I just fucking didn't want to, like, I didn't want to, I, I didn't know who I was supposed to care about. I just didn't. Yeah, and I didn't care about them. And the message. What is the message? The constant message. What is it? What is the just, message? It felt preachy yes. and condescending. Yes. And snooty yes it was very snooty this movie was so pretentious pretentious the Prete- perfect word and the movie i feel like the movie thinks that jamie and darby are the pretentious ones mm-hmm. but the movie doesn't realize that it's the whole Josh, thing the whole thing is pretentious the whole thing is pretentious oh god josh's documentary sounds terrible oh God. And the fact that he wouldn't take notes, that he wouldn't cut things, that he it was like six out what was it? Six hours long of all this crap. Like and he was been working on it for like ten years. How long was he working on it? Look, some people work on movies for a long time. Like I'm not it's true. you know, that happens for sure. Um Okay, couple things I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about babies for a second. Yes, please. Because I texted you list. during the watching of this movie, and my thought was God help me if I have to watch another scene about grown adults being afraid of babies and being like, I don't know how to talk to baby. Oh, babies are so scary. Fuck. Stop. Right. I'm so tired of scenes like that. Like I'm a parent. Okay. I have three kids. I very rarely see people with kids being portrayed in any realistic way in a movie. They're always vapid and completely concerned with the children and their like p- entire personalities are subsumed by the baby and everything about having children is nightmarish. And yeah, all those things are in a way true, but that's like a, such a small, it's like an 11 sided die and you're only showing me one side. I feel like yeah. almost every movie I see about people with children is written by somebody who doesn't really, and I know under, I know no Bob Beck has kids. Is he a dad? I, he is a dad. He had kids with Jennifer Lee and Lee, didn't he? He has at least one kid. Anyway, I feel like this movie, I feel like this is another movie where I feel like this movie is written about people with children, but they don't, but that person doesn't seem to know what it's like to actually have children. Maybe he doesn't know what it's like to have children because he doesn't do any of the work. Maybe. I mean, I felt like like marriage story felt like that, that, that person knew what it was like to have a son because Mm. there was love, Mm. you know? And here's what I'll say it about this. Felt I think selfish, though, in in Marriage Story, it felt that the dad. It was all about. Him no, I felt Charlie loved. I felt like he loved. Ch- no, I feel like he really loved his son. I really felt that in the movie. I just am bit. I'm, I'm have bad feelings about no no about. That's fair. Um. So here's what I'll say about this. 
and I and I hope I haven't sounded too cavalier about this because because we know the reason they don't have children is because uh, Cordelia has experienced a bunch of miscarriages and actually went mm-hmm. through IVF and all that stuff. I think that's a really important thing that should be portrayed in movies. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's handled in this movie it's not at all. It's not. It's used as a plot point. Like yeah. Cordelia, like that scene in the in the jam jamboree or music thing could have been about how Cordelia feels suffocated by this this thing that she couldn't have. And it feels more like she's just thinks it's like too annoyed. loud in there. Yeah. yeah. It's like I don't feel like the person who wrote this movie knows how painful it is to actually lose a baby. And to yeah. try to have babies and not be able to have babies and then to have people tell you over and over again you should have babies. that you should you have, have babies. babies. That's babies. fucking yeah. terrible. And nobody should ever do that to anyone. And I don't feel like this movie actually understands what that feels like. It just throws oh, that and, in there. I don't like feel like it, way, it treats Josh sensitively about that either. Like, how does Josh really feel about that? Them. Yeah, the way they wrote them, it was just like kind of like casually thrown away. Like, I was like, if you go through IVF, you are serious about wanting kids. You're not just like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I might want kids. She I might not. She, had sev- she said she had multiple miscarriages. That is horrible. That is so hard on a woman and a like on a marriage. And yeah. I feel like they had they had an opportunity to make that something that mattered and it didn't feel like it mattered at all and um and and i feel like there was a there was a clear tie there between the way uh josh wanted jamie to look up to him and the way that what he wanted was a was he wanted to have a baby he was at a place in his life where he wanted to you know pass on knowledge and experiences to people all of that is very valid but i don't think the movie tied those two things together in any uh, in any way that made sense emotionally or if it was supposed to be there, I don't think the connection was made clearly mm-hmm. or, or had a- any sensitivity. Yeah. Um, and then in the end, they end up adopting a baby. <sighs> Looks like you have something to say about that. Um, yeah, it was just one more way to do, um, a, a condescending me- message showing the, the baby with the cell phone doing all the, the No, I mean, like, they're the- going to adopt a baby. Like, they were on their way yeah. to adopt a baby. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, I'm just like, great. Let's well, add the baby with an- the cell phone. Another. Yeah. yeah. No, I just mean, like, that just felt very, like, hit you over the head with, yes, technology is destroying us. Oh, my God. Us. This like, baby is, now we're going to have a baby and we're going to have to deal with this baby's going to be better with technology, technology. than we are. Um, I, If they could have just left it on him saying, like, he's not evil, he's just young, and that could have been a good mm-hmm. place to leave the movie. Just leave it right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this movie had too many things in it. Too many too things. Too many, too many messages that were just too like, listen to my message. Thanks. Like, millennials versus generation x yes that's what it was yeah versus being child free um like either they should have been like we we don't have kids and we're happy with that choice or we don't have kids because we couldn't and there is some bag there's some baggage and some scars there yeah and i don't feel like they were willing to pick either one they didn't didn't choose they tried to have both and it was like yeah what yeah, um, you, you know what else I never think. need to see again? People having an argument while a tea, tea kettle whistles. <laughs> Let's just like take that out of movies forever and ever. I yeah. I thought I was like, is he being like cheeky about this? Like, is is he being is this a nudge nudge wink wink thing with this tea kettle, or is he actually using this as a device? Because I fucking please nobody ever do. Please everyone stop. We don't don't ever have a tea kettle boil over. When, su- when emotions are boiling over, it's like, I want to hit you in the head with a tea kettle every time somebody does that. Oh Not God. you personally, but the filmmaker, you know? Uh, yes. I want to hit him in the head with a I'm tea kettle I'm sorry. I'm well. so aggro right now. This movie has I'm made me so aggro. so aggro. I feel so oh aggro gosh. right now. I'm so sorry, you guys. No, I'm I'm sorry, too. Like, I feel like I'm just being like a... I Well, like this just... movie, I kept checking. I was like, how much longer is this movie? I know. Um, 
I watched the first like half an hour yesterday and I was like, I'm done with this for today. I'm going <laughs> to I'm, I'm procrastinate on this until tomorrow. Uh, um, this was an assignment, Nicole. This I'm was, so this sorry. Was I know. We didn't even talk about the ayahuasca. We got to talk about the ayahuasca trip. We got to talk okay. about it. I think I actually enjoyed that scene, except for the barfing. You know how I feel about barfing on screen? And there was a lot. I actually like it started to come up, Sarah. Like it crept up my esophagus that no. because there was so much barfing. I started no. to gag a little bit. I don't like watching oh people God. like just talking about it is making it rise up a little bit right here okay, in wait, my throat. Stop. Oh, there was oh. so much barfing. I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it. Yeah, there was a lot. <sighs> um, I Sleepy Adam Driver looks really cute, though. His sleepy drug face. Like, I was like, I kind of like it. I didn't like how in this movie the couples, like, kissed. Like, how, like, Cordelia kissed mm-hmm. Jamie and then Darby kissed josh like i'm like why do you have if you have two couples why do that why do they have to get involved like that like um i think they i think that darby and jamie represented in some ways like cordelia and josh when they were young and like fun and exciting if they ever were i don't know they seem like such wet blankets um well cordelia seems fun i feel like cordelia was probably fun at one point but josh maybe Mm -hmm. was never fun um so I get where that's going. I get the, you know, wanting to have a little bit of that excitement to yourself. I think Cord- I think Darby kissed Josh because she was s- sad. And I wish they had handled that better. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like if it had been about her kissing Josh because she was sad and because Josh was sad, I feel like that would have made more sense. I actually didn't mind. Uh, I didn't mind Cordelia kissing Jamie and that all made sense narratively. Like she was confused. She's really fucked up. And then she like does it again and then realizes she doesn't want that. Like that worked. You could have just left it at that. Like we didn't, we didn't need to then have Darby Darby kiss Josh. I just, I don't know why that happened unless, but that's the thing is like Darby also didn't really have like what was going on with her. Like, yes, we knew she got upset about like Josh and her weren't like Jamie and her weren't getting along, but like, how did she feel about Jamie kissing Cordelia? Like he obviously told her about that at some point. So did that upset her? Is that why she, they started to fight? Like, I feel like the movie didn't really care about her feelings very much. Mm-mm. So, nope. which is a shame. Yeah. It was all about Josh's feet. Fe- Josh fe- and Jamie. Feelings. And yeah. And Jamie was supposed to be some kind of e- like when he called him evil, I was like, really? He's not evil. He's. He's Machiavellian. He's Machiavellian a little bit, maybe. But even still, like, I think he didn't do anything. Yes, he was deceitful. I'm not going to say he's not. But he didn't do anything that Josh didn't directly, like, play into. Like, Josh was playing along the whole time. Mm -hmm. And also, Jamie did kind of try to push him. I think everyone pushed Josh to try to make his movie and josh kept self-sabotaging like he didn't do anything that jamie told him to do in that pitch meeting he yeah. didn't listen to his advice at all mm-hmm. um he didn't listen to his father-in-law's advice about cutting the movie like there were just so many things like where people were trying to help him and he was like i can't i don't need your help i'm yeah. good i'm already a god yeah and that he kept talking about how he was a failure and you know, it's like he wasn't willing to accept help, but he also was saying, like, I, I'm i not as good as J- J- Jamie. I'm not as good as other pe- 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 people. I mean, I think Jamie. Here's one thing that I did think was a good parallel was Jamie was Darcy Darby saying Jamie only loves himself. And then later, uh, Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys with the baby saying he's um, from the beastie boys yeah <laughs> oh my God. he was great and then later adam from the beastie boys saying i mean he wasn't that was in his character in the movie that's that's the actual person um saying 
I thought th- th- this is the literally the only real thing that was said by anyone in a movie about baby having a baby. He said, I thought when I had this baby that I was going to change, but I didn't. I-, I still am the most important person in my life. That was the only true thing that was said in the whole movie. Because um, I do feel like when you're a parent, you feel like you're supposed to completely change, become like so, so like super sacrificial. I think when you have a little baby like that, I think there is a sense of like, I would do anything for this baby. And then they get a little older and they start sassing you and, um, you know, leaving the fridge door open. And then you're like, would I though? And so I feel like as at the baby stage, you're the, that's a little early to be saying that. But yeah, there's definitely a part of me that feels like I should be a better person, but I'm still kind of a selfish idiot even though i'm a parent yeah i didn't like that line actually because my parents have always told me the uh, opposite well maybe they're good people they're better than me well they're good good people but like also my mom she has never been the most important person in her life well, then that makes so, sense. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm the most important person in my life. I'm kind of joking about that. But yeah, I still am pretty selfish. Uh, and I'm not wise. And I don't make the right decisions a lot of the time. And I'm not always my best self. And I'm mediocre as a parent at best. So um, I feel like that was very real. And one of the only real things I heard in this whole movie. So I think that Josh... Jo- like everybody's mad at Jamie for caring so much about Jamie, but Jamie's 25. Like, of course he cares about himself and his career. When you're 25, that means everything to you. Your art means everything to you. And he didn't feel as strongly about Josh as Josh felt about him. Mm-hmm. Like Josh yeah, l- said, Josh I love like, you. I loved you. That was the and second. Was like, I really like you too. That was the second man. realest thing that was said in this movie. Yeah. Uh, I also really liked Adam against the um, window with the coat over his shoulders. And I was like, oh, this movie is a romance. I didn't realize it until now. But Jamie and Josh, this is a romance. I wish that they had played more around with stuff like that. Then I think this movie yeah. would have been more interesting. Yeah. Um, but but Jamie will pour water on you if you're on fire. So he's not the worst. He's not that terrible. He'll still throw a pitcher of water on you when you're on fire. I think we're just, I think everybody in this movie is too hard on Jamie is what I'm saying. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be friends with Jamie. I wouldn't have a. Uh... Sarah, we've been friends with Jamie. I know. We've already I been know. friends with Jamie. No, you're right. We literally were friends with Jamie. You're right. Please roll back the clock and remember that we literally were friends with Jamie already. Okay. <laughs> we're not friends with Jamie anymore, but we were. Um, but I, I don't, I don't, I, but I didn't approach that relationship with like, I'm better than you. Like Josh did with Jamie. Yeah. (sighs) This movie, I felt exhausted. I feel exhausted. I'm exhausted. This movie makes me feel exhausted. Uh, final thoughts on while we're young. I want to um not so, so, watch this anymore while I'm young. So you want you want you don't want to you don't want you felt like you aged watching this movie is what you're saying. I aged. I got some grays. So should I take should I take make sure that we don't have any more Noah Baumbach movies on the wheel for a while? For a while. For yeah. a while. We'll take a break. To like oh, you know what I now. did? We didn't do this. Before before we finish talking about this movie, I just wanted to see if you there were any parallels you saw between Charlie Barber from Marriage Story and Josh. I know we talked about it a little bit, but did you see any like big parallels? I feel like there are a lot between Josh and Charlie. I wasn't looking for that. I couldn't but... not look for it. I mean, I guess they're both selfish. Um, well, Nicole says he's selfish. Well, I think he, like for me, I didn't see the love. I saw the, yeah. I want to get control 
back. He's my son. He's I, as in like my son, as in like I own him. Like mm. I deserve to have him because he's mine, as opposed to because I I love him and care about him. It felt like mm. he's mine because he is my son. Like I made him. I um, disagree because he gave up his career to be closer to his son. And the thing that Charlie Barber cared about most before almost losing his son was his career so much that he didn't, he completely ignored his wife. I do feel like Josh feels like a predecessor to Charlie, but Josh, like Charlie was successful and Josh doesn't seem to be successful. So Not successful. Yeah. I don't know. Final thoughts for real this time about while well, we're for real final, um, final thoughts. Very final. Um, I well, no, let me put this way: Would you recommend this to a fan of Adam Driver's work? Like yeah. a fan? Would I would too? I mean, yeah, I think you should. He's great in it. He's, he's great. great. He's really I great. Love, we didn't even talk about his performance, the way his his gestures, like yes. his voice, all of like he did. He did a great job. He's so charming. Very charming. Like he's so charming. His smile. He smiles a lot in this movie. He's just very there's, charming. There's lots of close-ups. And I, 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 in this movie, I realized that there aren't a lot of close-ups of him in um, movies. There's a lot of close-ups in Marriage Story in Star- as well. Marriage Story? Okay. Yeah, there's tons of close-ups in Marriage Story. Noah Baumbach right. is in love with Adam Driver. Like, he that's is. the real love story here. Mm-hmm. Um and that's True. fine. Good for you, Noah Baumbach. It's good to find your muse. Like, I think he was in love with Ben Stiller and then he became in love with Adam Driver. And then now mm-hmm. Adam Driver's in all his movies. Yeah. Um, good for you, Adam and Noah. Good for you guys. But yeah, no, there were some really beautiful close-ups of him. I noticed that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Adam was really great wait, in this movie. Wait. Okay. Can you can you say that again? I, 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 I missed what you said. Oh, I was just saying that um, Adam was great in this movie. He was. His performance was really good. Very good. Um, okay. What are your fi- fi- final thoughts, Nicole? I I felt this movie was very exhausting for me. Mm-hmm. I'm a middle-aged person too, and I get... Oh, one thing I did think the movie did really well that I want to give it props for is that uh, I want to give it props for, uh, for uh, this movie being about a woman, having a woman who's middle-aged, who's, wor- who's worried about getting older, but who looks amazing like i feel like in movies when a woman is getting older she's either not actually that like she's actually like in her 30s Mm -hmm. or she's uh or they make her look super old and decrepit Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. naomi watts i looked it up because i was like there's no way she's even in her 40s and she's 40 she was 45 when she made this movie Mm -hmm. so she was not only the right age for the character which is not normal but she also looked amazing. And so I was like, "Good, yeah. f- I'm glad. Thank you, Noah Bombeck, for doing that. Thank you for yeah. doing the bare minimum and putting a woman yeah. who's the right age in this role and not making her look like a crone. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and I can say that. Beautiful. Um, but I mean, just the way she was lit and costumed, like they made her look like, you know, great. And not like, oh, she's getting old. Ah, oh, yeah. women are get old, and they, we, they must disappear the moment they become forty. Um, yeah. uh, what will I say about this movie? I would say, I feel like you could have a trilogy here with Greenberg, this movie, and Marriage Story. I feel like there's a trilogy there. There's the Bombeck trilogy, um, which I want to say Greenberg was even about a guy who's also a filmmaker. I feel like. Or a photographer or some shit. No. I, I, no. I swear to God. Uh, Ugh, so you could have a sad sack trilogy if you want. Only Adam Driver was not a sad sack in Marriage Story. He was a tasty dad snack. So what would I say about this? Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Adam's work, watch it. He's really good in it. And maybe... No, I'm not going to say... Because I said... I remember when we watched... Um, what was that movie? Ugh, the one with Daniel Radcliffe. What if? Uh, what if? What, remember we said go to YouTube and just watch Alan scenes and what if? I, that I really mm-hmm. believed. This one, mm-hmm. if if you haven't seen a Noah Bombeck film in a while, 
and you're not exhausted by it, then maybe watch the whole thing because it's yeah. not a terrible movie. I just it's felt it, it's a good movie. It, I mean, it's good. It's well made. It's technically good. It's technically good, but I didn't, it was not an enjoyable experience, but I, but I, but I honestly did enjoy every time that Adam was on screen. Yeah. He's really great. And that's not He's to say really that great. Naomi Watts and Ben Stiller aren't great. I just like did not vibe with the, their story at all. Yeah. And I felt like Cordelia deserved better. She did. And I'm kind of sad she's going to lose her bestie. Um, but I guess like now they've got their friends that are the right age back. I also don't know what that means. Like I have friends that are different ages. Like too. I was joking. I want to say that I was joking. Like I don't have a like I don't have a ton of friends in their 20s. But I do. There are people I know through improv who are really young and they're super cool. And I enjoy working with them and hanging out with them at like, you know, doing improv with them. Like we're not BFFs because like we just have different things going on in our lives. But like I like hanging out with them and they're fun and cool and smart and people in their 30s. I have people in their friends that I'm friends with that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Like I just I feel like at my age, I have a wide range of friendships and 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 I think you should have a wide range of friendships. It's enriching to have people in your life who are different than you. So I guess that's yeah. another thing that bothers me about this movie is that it's like you can only be friends with people in your same life path. Yeah. And that's they're, bullshit. They're, their friends who were their age were like sh- shaming them for being friends with people in their 20s. But also I wouldn't go out and do ayahuasca with people in their 20s because I am too old for that shit. Like I, I literally I, am. I don't think that they should have been shamed for that. E- e- no, they shouldn't have been shamed. Either. But but I wouldn't do it because I'm. it's like... You kids have fun. Uh, I'm going to lay in bed and read a fic. I watched a documentary about ayahuasca, and most of the people in the documentary were older. Of course they are. You know what? I don't need to vomit up my my evil because I have kids, and they bring home stomach bugs all the time. So I am vomiting up my evil. Well, not lately, because we've all been quarantined for the last year. So I haven't vomited up my evil in about a year. But once things really kick back into gear again and life goes back to normal, I assure you I'll be vomiting up my evil on the regular. I don't need ayahuasca for that. Gosh. You remember, you got the stomach bug for my kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were vomiting up some evil, were you not? Mm -hmm. I was. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is a weird segue, but should we do moments of thirst? Yes. Okay. So I've written down all the, I've written down all my moments of thirst. Number one. Yes. I, most of these things are things that I feel like the movie wants me to dislike, and yet I can't. Number okay. one, the fedora. Adam mm-hmm. looks great in that fedora. He was so adorable. Where I thought he was adorable in the fedora. Number two, the record collection. That was a hot record collection. That was hot as hell. That was sexy as hell to have that many records. wall of records. I have records. I love records. I don't. That is more impressive than my dad's collection. It was great. And he had a real sweet stereo setup, and that was that was fucking hot as hell. Yeah, the tight pants. He was like the tight hipster pants. Moi. Adam's got some nice thighs. There's no denying that. God, I really, I really, really hate that I can't see anyone below the neck. I know. I'm so sad for you. Like, you I don't really, see anyone below the know, neck. They're just a, like a blur. They're just like a blur for you. My boyfriend was talking about the <laughs> the men's shirts, and I yes. was like, I didn't. I literally like. What I did he say about the men's shirts? That that they were tight. They were tight. Yeah, they were a little tight. Yeah, but I didn't notice. I know. I'm so sorry, Sarah. What one day, one day we'll find a cure for your nipple blindness. And what was what was the other thing you have here? <laughs> Um, your dick, dick, crotch, blindness? crotch, your nipple br- blindness, and your crotch blindness. Pel- pelvic, pelvic, pelvis, pel, pelva, pelvic, pelvic amnesia. No, it was. Pel- I saw. Pel- I noticed pelvises. Pel- okay, pelvic, um, pelvis. pelvis. You're pelvis aware. You're nipple blind, but pelvis aware. Now I remember. Okay, pelvis aware. But even with so with your pelvis awareness, you did not notice all the tight jeans that Adam was wearing in this movie. I'm only. So where if there's thrusting, like active oh, thrusting going on. The pelvis has to be thrusting or you can't see it. Your vision is based on movement. 
<laughs> yeah. So if someone's like, so if someone were shaking the nipples at you, you would see them. Yes, okay, got you. Yes. All right, all right. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, my <laughs> last moment of thirst is his outfit at the barbecue. I thought he just looked oh super God. hot when he turned around with the like tight sleeves, and then I noticed he was wearing also wearing shorts. I was like, just stop, just stop the movie, just stop it, just stop. Everybody, stop rolling. Let's just stop right now. Like, let I just want the movie to be about this now. That's all I want this movie to be about is this outfit that he's wearing at the barbecue. I want him to be I want him to make me some vegan sausages. And that's all that I, I want this movie to now make about him standing over a hot grill making me vegan sausages. That's all I want. Yeah, I I'm I'm picturing it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. As you would imagine, I'm normally up for pretty much anything in the bedroom. But I can't tell if what happened was weird or sexy. Are we ready for some Adam and Andy trivia? Yes. All right. So this is Adam or Andy, a trivia contest for one. Sarah is going to give me some kind of trivia and some kind of a configuration and try to stump me. And and I'm going to attempt to not be stumped. So I have five true and false. I'm not going to tell you how many are true and how many are false. I'm just going to. I'm just going to say, say them. And you have to say either true or false. Okay. okay. He, this is about Adam. True These or false about Adam. Adam. Got it. Okay. He doesn't own cake. 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 Cable. He has tried to get it three times, but has n- never followed through. All right. I'll come back to that. But right now I'm going to say that. I think Joanne would just take care of it for him. So right now my gut is going to say, but that's false because I feel like Joanne would just be like, honey, I'll take care of it. Okay. Do you want me to tell you at the end? Yes. Okay. Two. Mm -hmm. He stopped eating whole chitch chickens when he started being able to eat two whole chitch chickens a day and was like, I got to, I got to put a stop to this. Wow. I want that to be true, but I'll think about it. Okay. Three. His company, Arts and the Armed Forces, was inspired by the Dallas cheerleaders who entertained his unit in the the military. Wow. Fuck. I'm going to say the first two are (laughs) false. Um, the last one I'm thinking about, and I want to say it's also false. I'm just going to go false on all three because the last, like I've heard him talk about arts and the armed forces before, and I've never heard him mention the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. So, okay. Four. There, there's five. Oh shit. Okay. Well, the first three, I'm going to go false, false, false. Okay. Four. He ne- ne- never believed in sa- 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 Santa Claus, though his parents tried to get him to. Okay. Okay. That sounds like it could be true. But I feel like he does. We don't know a lot about his childhood. Okay. Um, five. One of He was one of the only members of the man who killed Don Quixote cast to read the book it was ba- based on. Okay, that sounds true. I'm going to go false, 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 false. True. Okay. First one is true. According to him, according to a quote. Really? Joanne didn't step in there and fix that shit? No. Okay. All right. Well, it definitely sounds like he wouldn't be able to get cable hooked up. That that tracks. So two is false. I came up with that one. Um, Because I feel like I would sense it in the force if he had stopped eating rotisserie chicken. The true story is that he stopped because, according to him, he stopped because he started to be able to eat an entire foot-long subway sub, even after he'd eaten a whole a whole chit chit ch- again. So he well, was he's like, a big boy, so that that makes sense. <laughs> okay, that's um, hilarious. <laughs> third is oh, true as who, well. Who hasn't eaten a whole foot-long sub though? Am I right? The third one is false. True. The true. third one is true as well. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, really? Said, according to him, he said that wow. the the so it wasn't that he wanted to be like the Dallas cheerleaders. It was sure. that he thought that 
the army should have more thought provoking content entertain them that makes than sense. the Dallas church your leaders that makes sense um four is false mm-hmm. because i have no idea if he believes i mean it could be true it Who sounds knows? like it could be true yeah could be true five is true so you were correct on five what um five the, again? the man the man who killed <laughs> oh, yeah, don, yeah, yeah. don quixote that he read the book and yeah that the, makes sense like not no one else did so he does yeah, his homework that's, that's totally him yeah he yeah. does his homework for sure Wow, thanks, Sarah. That was that was really hard, and I feel like I learned a lot. You did. I feel like we came yeah. full circle with the rotisserie chicken story. Yes. Oh, you look awesome. Come the fuck upstairs. <laughs> okay. But wait, I have to worry about something. What? If you come up here, I'm going to tie you to my bed and keep you for at least three days. I'm just in that kind of mood. Are we ready to spin the wheel? Yeah. Um. So the wheel <laughs> is... Um, oops. The wheel uh, is... Uh, huh? Andy. Yeah, it's Andy. It's an Andy week. Um, now, I don't know if you remember what we decided. Oop. I don't know if you remember what we decided last. Yes, I remember. Uh, so what's on the wheel this week, Sarah? Brooklyn Nine-Nine episodes one through four. So I'm going to spin that and oh, it's going to be Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode episodes one through four. So nice. uh, listeners, we haven't completely run out of Andy movies, but he's in uh, the rest. A lot of his other films, he's their bit parts. Um, we are going to eventually do his SNL appearances and a Lonely Island snack pack or maybe a couple Lonely Island snack packs where Sarah's going to mm-hmm. put together a couple of uh, Lonely Island videos for me to, for us to watch. Um, but because we just did pop star, never stop, never stopping, it felt like we didn't really want to go to that right away. So Mm -hmm. we're going to now take a detour to Brooklyn nine, nine for a little while. We're going to do four episodes at a time. So we'll do episodes one through four and then five through eight, et cetera. And then occasionally we'll sidetrack to SNL or, um, you know, Lonely Island Mm -hmm. until another Andy movie comes out. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, if there's some really big thing, because we didn't know anything about Cuckoo, uh, one of our listeners suggested that to us, and I'm so glad that she did. Um, If there's something out there that you think we should watch that we have not watched yet, tweet at us at AdamAndyPod, and we will. Uh, But for now, we're going to do some Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and I'm excited. I fucking love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah, uh, I haven't watched the first season in a really long time. And it's honestly, I think Brooklyn nine, nine was my gateway drug to Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm. So for you, it was lonely Island. Mm-hmm. For me, it was Brooklyn nine, nine. Like I always liked Andy Samberg, en- like fine, mm-hmm. but Brooklyn nine, nine is what made me fall in love with Andy Samberg. I love Jake yeah. Peralta. He's a just like, I love the whole show. The whole fucking show is great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And so that's what we're gonna be watching next week is uh Brooklyn Nine Nine. Sarah, we made it through. We you made did. it through this movie. I promise not to make you watch any more Noah Bombeck for a little while. At least while, until yeah. maybe White Noise comes out. Or well, I don't I can't promise that. I think there's a I think there's a short film that Adam's in. Francis Ha, was that directed he was, by he was on Francis Ha. yeah but Noah Baumbach didn't direct Francis Ha, did he mm-hmm. I thought that, that was it was the first film that um he was I that, thought that, uh, 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 I thought understand. Greta yeah. Gerwig directed that no Mm-mm. look it up who I just need to verify is she wrote it or something right like I know she's in it but I'm pretty sure Greta Gerwig like wrote it maybe or uh I know he's in Francis Ha so we director no, Noah Baumbach okay but who wrote Green it play Noah Baumbach and Gret, Gret, Greta Gerwig okay so they wrote it together okay mm-hmm. so I won't make you watch Francis Ha anytime soon or there's another one like the mouse squid stories or some shit like that that mm-hmm. there's like a, several films and like Adam's yep. in one of them with Ben Stiller again I think mm-hmm. um, but I will I promise no more Noah Bombeck for at least six to eight weeks. <laughs>